The best setup for cutting a 60 degree thread is to turn the compound rest at 29 degrees or 29 and a half degrees from perpendicular to the axis of the thread. So we'll do that. We'll re-engage the live center and now we're going to use a center gauge to make sure that our tool is set square to the part. It's very important that the tool is square to the part. So using the center gauge then we can adjust the tool so that it is square. Another name for the center gauge is a fishtail gauge. That's a slang term but uh, some people call it that. We are going to set the quick change gearbox to 16 threads per inch, which is Roman numeral 2, B, R, and 1. That will give us 16 threads per inch. That makes the pitch of the thread 1 16th of an inch. You may have to jog the gears. Uh, in order to get them to mesh properly. But when you jog it, then the lead screw should turn. Touch the tool to the outside diameter of the part and zero both the cross slide dial and the compound rest dial. Take a 5 thou depth of cut disengage the half nut at the end of the cut. This is the half nut lever. It must be fully engaged in order for it to cut the thread and for the tool to follow the pitch of the thread correctly. After each cut, return the cross slide to zero. It always returns to zero. Then we add more cut with the compound rest. You can see the scratch cut there. We went from 5 thou, we're going now to 10 thou in depth of cut. Make sure that that half knot lever gets fully engaged. checking to be sure that the pitch is 16 threads per inch. It's easy to do with a ruler, but they do make a thread pitch gauge. You can get that from the tool room and you can also check it with that. Add some cutting oil, engage the split nut lever, and take the next cut. Disengage the lever at the end of the cut, back the tool away, return the tool to the beginning of the cut, return the cross slide to zero and add five more thou to the compound rest and repeat. I continue to make 5 thou depth of cut until about the 30 thou range and then I went down to 2 thou depth of cut and the final few cuts I did at 1 thou depth of cut until I reached a depth of 45 thousandths. That's a radius value. It worked well in this case. It may not always be the same so you can't necessarily rely on the 45 thou but it's a place for you to kind of use as a benchmark. Make sure you try your nuts on before you get to 45 thou depth of cut.
when I try the nut on, I try it on one side and then I reverse it or flip it over and try it from the other side just to make sure that there's no burr or something on the inside of the nut that prevents it from going on one side and not the other. I want to make sure that it can go on equally from both sides. The other thing to do is to check the diameter of the thread. When you cut a thread, sometimes the outside diameter will grow. So check the outside diameter. If it has gotten a little bit big on you, you can file it back down to the correct size and then try your nut again. If your outside diameter gets too big, even though you've gone to full depth on your thread, your nut might still not go on. Then you go deeper, and then when you realize that the OD is too big, and you file it down, then your nut is too loose. So it's just something you can do as a you know, precaution. Uh, you can also see that I'm running the file at an angle down each thread, following the thread, so that it can uh, deburr it. When you're doing something like this, make sure you never change the um, speed in the quick change gearbox. Once you've picked your spindle speed, which I think I used, uh, I think 125 RPM, nice comfortable speed, um, make sure that you never change it because that will uh, mess up your thread. It won't match up anymore. At this point I try the nut on and find that it fits both ways but I think it's just a little bit tight so I decide to take one more cut. I add one more thousandths and then run the cut again. 